Well, we're going to come for Havoc number two. So this is my third attempt at this. This video is called Addressing Racism. So let's begin. I deleted other videos on this topic. In those videos, I talked about three people specifically, two blacks, one white, and let me break it down for you. I talked about Donald Trump, Candace Owens, and Umar Johnson. Now, I know you're thinking, what the hell do those three people have in common? The word supremacist comes to mind. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna grill these guys and you're not gonna like it. So if you're a Donald Trump fan, a Candace Owens fan, or Umar Johnson fan, this video is not for you. Because you're not gonna like what I have to say. And as most people, when the truth hits you in the face, most people don't wanna accept it until it affects them directly. You will avoid things in life as much as you possibly can, and most people in the world avoid the truth. I'm guilty of it, but I'd much rather have the truth to live in my face now than find the truth out down the road, because that makes it even harder to accept, and then knowing that you have to accept it makes it harder to adapt, harder to adjust, and it just all out hurts your feelings and pisses you off on so many levels. So let us begin. In my other video, the reason why I talked about these three people was the freaking pure and simple, they were all supremacists. Now granted, I gotta give Candace Owens a, a tiny slap on the hand as a high five um, pass because some of the things she said is a whole lot more accurate and I hate to admit it that she might be closer to right than wrong. I am not a Candace Owens fan by any way, shape, or form. And, she went to war with Oprah, so she's still going to have problems probably later in life. I don't have anything against Oprah. I'm not a fan. I'm not not a fan. I have seen a couple of good Oprah movies, Color Purple. But other than that, you know, I've got nothing against Oprah, and God bless her. I could care two shits what she does. Anyway, and Candace Owen, on the other hand, she, um, she went in a few weeks ago, I'll say maybe a month and a half ago, where she started talking about Breonna Taylor and... George Floyd and um, uh, the Aubrey dude, and she left off the guy who got shot by the police in Georgia at the Burger King or the McDonald's or whatever. And so let me give her her credit. All right, let me give her her credit. Because as far as I'm concerned, the guy at McDonald's or Burger King, all he had to do was just not fight. And all the cops had to do was tase him when he overpowered them and ran. So you see the clusterfuck that I feel there? Because I personally know that if you cooperate with the cops, nine times out of ten, you're going to go home. It's when you get that raw hair up your ass that says, you can't do this to me, and you act like you're Superman is when we get fucked up. But black people, some of us, don't have to do that to get fucked up. You know? And that's just a fact of life. Some of us don't have to do that to get fucked up. But from what I saw in the video, and... Loving my bro, BR. He was right. You know, they could have took the keys. They could have let him get away. They could have let him sleep off. They had the car. You know, they had the man's car, so he would have to come back for the car eventually. Or his girlfriend would have to come for the car, which they would detain her until he showed up. You know, there are ways around shooting people of color. However, most of us don't tend to look for it. Which, by the way, there was a video on Instagram. I don't know if it's making its way around... But somebody I follow had a video on Instagram where this white cop was chasing down this white dude. And the white dude stabbed the cop. But the white cop kept chasing him. In mid-stroke, the white cop changed his firearm for his taser. And you can see it on his body cam as he pulls out his gun, puts it in his right hand, takes the taser out. Excuse me. He takes the gun in his right hand, puts it in his left hand as he pulls out the taser. And he has a taser. And he shoots the white guy that stabbed him. Now, the other two white officers come in and they remove the taser out of the guy's ass and all kinds of other stuff and they check him out. Body camera ends there. So hopefully that officer is okay. But all the comments on the bottom of that video said if the guy would have been black, he'd have had six bullets in him and it wouldn't have been a problem. Now, I'm going to agree with that because the officer did have his actual service weapon out first. And then he switched to his taser and most people would say and this also happened in Miami so <laughs> God only knows what goes on down there anyway after 
tasing the guy. You know, he got checked out by his boys and everything. But, you know, he had to have an adrenaline dump, so that was going on at the same time. And all the comments. I, there was not one comment in favor of this cop because he tased the white guy. And every comment on that Instagram post said that if the guy would have been black, he wouldn't be here today. Yeah. And we have seen cases where that has happened. But like the case in Jersey where the black guy did attack the officers with a knife. Just like this situation. And the black guy, though he was mental, he still kept coming at the officers. You hear the officers say, stop. The mother of that young man even threw her cell phone at the cop. Now, the cops didn't have tasers. Now, in that case, they could have winged him. They could have shot him in the arm. They could have shot him in the leg. Well, it's probably not a good idea to shoot him in the leg because there's an artery in your leg that if you get hit in that artery, you'll bleed out in less than a minute. So that's probably not the best idea. Shooting him in the belly is not much better because you could paralyze the man and end his life anyway. And then you could shoot him in the shoulder. But when somebody's coming at you, you'll be surprised at how hard it is to actually shoot a moving target in one spot when somebody's charging right at you. It's not the same as a kung fu kick because when somebody's coming at me, I can kung fu kick the shit out of them because they're running at me. You know, now add a knife or a weapon into that mix. I really want to think about how I'm going to handle this before I try to kick this dude. You know, because I got to time that knife and the hand's quicker than the eye. So I have to time that fucking knife. I can't time everything other than that knife. I have to time that knife. I don't give a damn about the rest of them because I'm going to be focused on that knife. Which those cops were more than likely focused on the knife. Now, Miss Owens brought up uh, George Floyd's criminal record and all this other stuff. She brought up things about Miss Owens and I don't know, Kim and Breonna Taylor, excuse me. She brought up things about Miss Taylor and she brought up things about um, Aubrey, the dude that got shot while um, searching houses or jogging down the block or whatever it was. And you know, the thing about that is, in the defense of the black dude, there's not too many people on earth who don't drive through neighborhoods that they can't afford to live in and say, I'm going to live in that house one day. And they go put that work in and they're going to live in that house. And if not that house, they're going to live in one that damn near looks like it, if not better. So it's no problem with that dream. Now, as far as George Floyd is concerned, you know, um, I have seen a video with him either on Judge Judy or some court show. I don't know which one it was, but he was on a court show. And he had committed some kind of small smite crime. But at the time of this viewing of this video, George Floyd looked like he might have been maybe, maybe 18 years old. Maybe. And I didn't watch the whole video through. And I'll find it and look for it and let you guys know. But Miss Owens brought up all that shit. Now Miss Owens, who I don't like, has a very sharp tongue. I don't know if she thinks before she speaks or if she's a overcritical thinker, but she basically threw all these black people under the bus. Miss Owens is a supremacist on the simple fact that she's a reverse racist supremacist on many of the things that she says, which is why her and Oprah ass went to war. We know that's not good because when Monique went to war, her career really started tanking when she started fucking with Oprah. So, you know, you don't fuck with the people who have the power that can end your shit just as quick as your shit can begin. So, therefore, you don't fuck with Oprah. You know? Mr. Umar Johnson and I, I had mad respect for this man, even though I didn't know he was a black supremacist until one day I figured his ass out. And this is the thing about being woke. See, when you're waking up, is one thing. But when your ass is woke, like really woke, and you see what's really going on, and you read between the lines, you get it. I have one problem with Umar Johnson, and only one problem with Umar Johnson, who is a total and unadulterated, purified black supremacist. All right? So you guys are thinking, damn, James, you know you're black too. This is, he's going to benefit you. No, he's not. And this is my problem with Umar Johnson. Umar Johnson had made a video, a couple of them, you know, but one of them specifically that stuck out to me. I am of multicultural descent. In case you guys don't know, I am part Cherokee Indian, I am part black, and I am part white. Mr. Johnson, on this video, specifically said that when he built his school, the only reason why he's going to hire other teachers that aren't black is because of discrimination laws, and he doesn't want to get sued. But the part that pissed me off the 
fucking most. And he has no right to say this, but he said it. Which is why he lost my support that day. First thing he said was, if your kid is mixed and they're part black and part Asian or part white, they're welcome to my school. Check, that sounds good to me. Because it'd be like looking at myself going into a high prestigious school for black kids. And here's where shit went wrong. If your non-custodial parent is not black, I don't want them picking up your kid. And his words were a little bit different, a little bit sharper, and that's me putting it politely. And I said, so what happens if my black ass is at work and my Chinese wife is the only one that can pick up our child? You don't want her coming on the premises because she's fucking Chinese. Sounds right racist to me. I don't like racism. I give a damn what color your skin is. If you're a racist, you're a fucking racist, and I'm going to call you on it. So, Miss Owens and Mr. Johnson and Mr. Trump, they're all fucking racist. Now, granted, Mr. Johnson is a racist against white people. But Mr. Trump is a racist against all people, and Candace is a racist against black people, and extend it. Because I'm not really sure where she actually stands. I don't know what color her husband is, but I do know that Candace Owens doesn't really like black people, and I don't know where she stands. I know that Umar Johnson can't stand interracial couples. So, let's say, for instance, by the grace of God, I married my crush, and we both decide to have a child. And we have a pretty little girl who's half Chinese and half black which also means she's going to be part Native American and part white because I'm a thousand percent mutt because in just case you missed it, I'm part Cherokee, I'm part black, and I'm part white. So my daughter's going to be just like me. She's going to be mixed. But if I'm on the set of a movie and I can't come get my child, he doesn't want my wife to come get, get my child. So I'm like, dude. And then on another video, which again started pushing me farther away from him was... Who is he to tell me who I can't love? Because he was mad at his great-grandfather, great-great-uncle, whoever the hell Frederick Douglass is to him, because he married a white woman. Who are you to tell somebody who they can't love? Now, see, I had this argument with members of my family because I don't date black chicks. But if you've been watching, I have told you why I don't date black chicks. Two of them really ruined it for me. But since the dawn of me going to school, I've dated two black chicks, one that liked me, one that didn't like me. The one that liked me was after the one that I was with first. The one that I was with first did everything she could to just piss me off. And we're in like grade school, so it's puppy love. It's real to me, but it wasn't real to her when she's walking down the hall and making her pants fall. And we got all my buddies saying, look at your girl, look at your girl. She wearing grown up panties and everything, but look at your girl. She dropping her drawers in glass in the hallway. And you know, uh, third, second graders, you know, what the fuck is she doing? And me being a boyfriend, getting even angrier because nobody's supposed to see that except me. Like, you know, kids, they don't know shit about that shit, but they know how they feel from the inside. So after she moved away, I started messing with another girl who was black, who was light skinned like me, so she was clearly mixed. And. That shit started going wrong because she had to move away. But before those two incidences, there were two girls who was light-skinned, Lily and Sony. And both of them told me that I would never be good enough for black girls. And I didn't believe it. I never believed it. Until the girl with the shorts happened and the beautiful girl who I was with moved away. I tried to date more black girls and this is where being mixed worked against me with you're not a real black person, you're a half black person, so we can't mess with you. And you know how many black girls told me that? So, Mr. Johnson, what you fail to understand is, am I supposed to wait 40 freaking years for the right black girl to come along? Or am I supposed to live my life for me? I choose to live my life for me, not for you and not for my uncles and other people in the world who says, you need to date a strong black woman. Now, I need to date who I like. I need to date who's going to accept me for me which generally have been white chicks, Latin chicks, and Asian chicks. So if those are the girls who I'm going to be accepted by, those are the girls that I'm going to date. Flash forward into my teens, I tried dating two more black girls. 
you know. Because I had one, isn't it, with a white girl that really wasn't becoming because I had a white shirt, not like this, but it was a Spider-Man shirt that came in one red spot. Spider-Man. And when she jabbed that pencil on my back, the whole shirt was as red as this shit. And the teacher, Miss Davis, dumbass, didn't even notice. By the time I got finished bleeding out, class was over. I haven't forgotten her, by the way. She was one of the first Andy's that I dated. So, I went, went, went on through my life, you know. So, there was Torsha, who I didn't want to move too fast, because we were 12, and I had had sex. I lost my virginity at 10 by a girl who was 12 at the time. So, by the time I was 12, I knew what to do. The problem was getting a girl to let me do it. So, when I met Torsha, I was all about being nice, trying to move at the girl's speed. Obviously, I was moving too fucking slow, right? I didn't want to be a rapist, so I'm trying to coach my way in. It's a summer romance. The, the chance of me actually getting some was slim to zero in my head, but apparently I probably could have got some, but I was moving too slow because from the beginning of the summer, we started talking. By the middle of the summer, we were an item, and before my birthday, I taught her new boyfriend how to fly off my fucking porch. So she had the audacity and the testicular fortitude to bring this new guy to my porch. And my dad would treat me like I was Bruce Wayne. He'd go get us some snacks and she got on the porch and she um, waited for my dad to leave before she told me the truth. So I'd give her a mad profit telling me the truth. But the way she did that shit was just wrong. And so when she left, because I told him, y'all need to get the hell off my porch. And so <laughs> she got off my porch and dude thought he was just going to bop on by. I said, uh-uh, buddy. You're going to catch a ride on the James Williams Express. Huh? And I put my foot up his ass, and he missed the two steps that goes off the driveway, and he skinned his chin up on the ground. And he got up, dusted himself off, and I said, if I see you in this block again, I'm going to whoop your ass. He never came back. So then I began to torture, torture for the rest of the summer. Every time she jumped on that little spree, my dad's gone to work. And I'd be right there on the porch waiting. I'd hear that shit start up in my room. I'd jump out the bed. I'd run out to the porch. Try to make her crash that song bitch every fucking time. Yeah, jealousy is a thing. So, this is one of the reasons why I stopped being jealous. Because I, I, I learned that if a girl you're dating is going to give it to somebody else, it's not a damn thing you can do about it, but accept it. It's her body. Whether she chooses to give it to you or give it to somebody else, you have no choice. You have to accept it. It's her body. So then, after that went by, I met another girl. Her name was Sophonia. Sophonia was the last black girl that I was ever going to date. Now, let me explain something to you. All the kung fu in the world has got nothing on a bullet. I understand that. I'm 14. She's 14. She's dating a 23-year-old man. So I'm walking her home. And we stop. This guy's on a 10-speed. I don't know the motherfucker. But she knows the motherfucker. She's not telling me who the motherfucker is, but that's not a problem. Because he's about to tell me. Not only is he about to tell me out of his mouth, but he has a fucking gun drawn on me. And I have my BMX. And I'm looking down the barrel of a gun, and I'm looking at her, and I'm looking at the barrel of the gun, and I'm like, well, this is just fucking great. I'm gonna get murdered over ass that I need to stick my dick in yet. Fan motherfucking tastic. You know? So, my dad well, had his gun on that guy. So, it was pretty much a, a three-way clusterfuck that was about to happen. I'm about to get shot over a vagina that I didn't get by a 23-year-old who sleep with a 14-year-old, about to kill another 14-year-old. And then we have my father, who has his gun sticking out the doorway, saying, you shoot my son, I shoot you. And I said, by the time the cops get here, he said, I'm not going to shoot you where I'm going to kill you. I'm going to shoot you so that you're going to suffer. So that not only will you go to jail for killing my son, but you're going to go to jail for statutory rape. You will never see freedom and somebody's going to be making you their bitch when we're done. And you got two options. Put your gun away and ride off or catch a bullet. So he put his gun away and he rode off. Uh, my dad walked his phone to home, told me to get the fucking house. My dad kept his gun on the whole time that he walked his phone to home. Never saw her again. Never spoke to her again. Never rode past her motherfucking house again. Yes, I met her popping wheelies and riding past her house. And I know you're all thinking, what does this have to do with anything? This happens to do with Mr. Umar Johnson 
explaining to every black man on the planet that you are not a black man if you don't date a black woman. So therefore, he lost my respect with that shit. Right then and there. Any support that I even thought about sending this dude. Psh, nah, dude. Because why should I date who you want me to date if you want my kid to come to your school because you're trying to help young black people? You can't help young black people if you can't accept the ones that have black blood but don't look black. You don't want their mamas to come pick them up. So, stay tuned for part two.